Hey, good morning. Welcome to Korean Natural Farming Office Hours. Uh, with me, Drake, brought to you by Pure Cana Foundation and, um, and Master Cho. Oh, let's see here. If I do that and I didn't do that, you can see Master Cho. He's there. Wow. How cool is that? Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, studying all things Korean natural farming, diving deep, going into uh, further down into the soil than you ever thought was possible. Every week, Sunday, 9 a.m., Hawaiian Standard Time, um, and whatever time zone you're at right now, it's happening. Um, so thanks for tuning in, everybody. Got an hour to go over questions, comments, all kinds of things, whatever you got, Korean natural farming. And if you, if we run out of that, we're going through um, the cheap version of Korean natural farming, very inexpensive, Madaj, also known as Jadam. Um, and so that's what we've been doing for 2024 is there's no questions. We'll go deeper dive into that. Last time we covered some uh, pests, pest solutions. I think there were three of them we covered. And uh, if you're looking for old episodes of the office hours and want to find all of those things that we covered last week, um, why is it this way? Hmm. Oh, well, I'm sharing my own screen and it's not sharing the one I want to be sharing. But anyway, um, we'll do this then and, and block me. Uh, let's see. We'll do this. Why is it not? It's doing the wrong thing. Anyway, we'll just go like this. And go like this. So if you're looking for, I think it's showing what you, uh, but if you're looking for old episodes, um, last week, uh, knfsupport.com, uh, also sponsored by the Pure KNF Foundation. Uh, Pure KNF Foundation here. Um, Pure KNF Foundation. Doing, doing all this good, purecanf.org or knfsupport.com to get old episodes of Office Hours right here. Clicking on Office Hours and going to your old episodes, seeing all going back about two years or so. Um, and we also, last, last week I sat down after the Office Hours and went through a few, answering a few questions on KNF support. So many ways you can get your questions answered. Um, we're talking about Azola farming, you know. Um, asking, you know, aquatic plant named Azola, do we have any KNF advice? So here, you know, got a great answer. And, uh, well, at least I think it's great. If you think it's great, upvote it right here. Click that up arrow right there and upvote it. If you think it's bad, downvote it right there. And if it's your favorite, give it that little star here, which you probably can't see my cursor very well right here. So upvote it, downvote it, star it. And if you think this is a good question, upvote it, downvote it, or if you really are one of your favorites, star it right there. But uh, enabling you to uh, get more answers. And also today, uh, you know, it's uh, April 14th, and we have uh, a monthly meeting today. So if you are a member of the Pure KNF Foundation, you get a double dose of natural farming today from Pure KNF Foundation. And uh, we have special guest um, from uh, Nissa, Oregon, coming in, Royal Flush Farms, to talk to us. Uh, I believe Spencer and Yarrow and Earl, um, also Lauren. Lauren is Earl, but um, they just named him Earl to get more business for their pest uh, business. Uh, will be coming in with us today. So anyway, all those good things happening and more. So with that... Um, before we get into the rest of the episode, let's get some higher wisdom because, man, that's a long intro. But you know what? Trying to make this actually more available for more people to get in um, to, um, you know, learn. And if you're new to the show, then you need this intro. But if you're a veteran like most folks, we got uh, we got Christoph in the house. What's up? We got Cecily, member of the Pure KNF Foundation, coming in from Western Australia. We got Goofman from New York. James from Tanzania. What's up, James? And then Stone Mason. Uh, Talese is turning 24, man. Good, good, good age to be into natural farming. 
happy birthday to you and good time to be into natural farming. Uh, you know, you could set a, a new French revolution, hopefully less violent and more growing microbes. But, uh, you know, get that going for you. So thanks for being here. Let's get some higher wisdom. And today is I or increase. Powerful improvements are underway. The coming of the hexagram I signifies a period of increase when the power of heaven descends to surround and invigorate our lives. Like all phases, this too will come to an end. But if we make hay while the sun shines, tremendous progress can be made at this time. It is in the nature of human beings to relax and become careless when things become, begin to go well. The I Ching teaches us that we should not do this if we desire the greatest or the fullest blessing of the beneficial hour. Instead, in, oh, indeed, our rewards are multiplied if we increase our conscientiousness in auspicious times rather than decrease it. There are two ways in which the I Ching especially encourages us to do this. It's going to thumbs up me. Two ways. Our first task is to make sacrifices for others. In all your interactions now, embody generosity in thought and action. Forgive what is inferior in others and seek out the good. By giving encouraging and assisting, you will draw the superior person and everyone into devoted action. Your second task in this time of increase is to go on strengthening yourself. As thunder and wind strengthen each other, this means that if you see something good in another, you, you imitate it. When you discover something inferior in yourself, you eliminate it. These simple practices, if continued conscientiously over time, will improve your character and fortunes immeasurably. Through service and self-improvement, you assure yourself great progress in the days ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Increase. Do do that. Um, and I like that idea. Imi you know, you see something you like, imitate it instead of envy it, right? You see something you don't like, just check inside yourself. Are you exhibiting that instead of trying to have, you know, it's like the classic thing instead of trying to pull, you know, the two by six, four by eight, whatever, large piece of lumber out of a friend's eye. Oh, no, no. Instead of trying to pull the toothpick out of the friend's eye, Pull the four by six out of your own eye, right? That's that's like some something. I mean, I don't know. It's probably cubits measured in cubits, but pull the cubit of wood out of your own eye before you try to help your friend with a toothpick. Because um, you know, eliminating it yourself—that's the way to increase, right? Uh, not nit nitpicking, but doing, improving ourselves first, and then improving the whole world. And um, also. Let's see here if I can fix this real, real quick. Like, um, hang on, this one, and set this display to be this display. Okay, okay, yeah, I can fix that. Okay, so I don't think that messed too many other things up, and now I can go to uh, this and show you this. So. Let's full screen this. So this is the moon for today. Um, if you don't have my moon app, it is Mahina on um, iOS store. Mahina moon app, Hawaiian moon app, plank eye. Um, except from Seattle. Um, so today is Kupau, meaning it is the final evening that Uala and Kalo can be planted and expected to grow upright and firm ku. So uala is sweet potatoes, kalo is what people call taro, um, 
And so today is the last day you can plant that and expect it to grow upright and firm ku. Meaning that if you plant it after this, uh, we're headed out of, like ku pao. Meaning that we are headed, uh, I think, let's see. Um, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow's ole. So we're headed into the ole days. So we're coming. That's why the last the last ku pao, meaning yesterday was ku kolu, the third day of ku. Before that was kulua. You know, coming out of our new moon into our new, uh, and then it's going to be starting to get into the half moon phase. So um, Hawaiian fishing advice for today is fair fishing on reef, balmy weather with steady gentle winds, low tide in afternoon. So if you're near the ocean, check this out, verify, make sure it's correct that the Hawaiians were on it with their fishing advice. And um, this is just an amalgamation and generalization of what they were saying. But, uh, you know, if you're going to plant your call, we'll do it today, unless you're going to wait till next week. So, uh, yeah, good fun with that. And uh, so is there any questions here we had? Um, no. Okay, well, I did. Um, I did have... Uh, a text message, more than a question, it was more of a comment. So I'm going to get into that. And just pull that up here. Um, oh my gosh, so many text messages. Why do people text me? Um, why? Why? Okay, here it is. Okay. So, um, Let's see, is there any way to make this maximize? I don't think I can show, well, maybe if I click, oh, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide this over. Slide over, too many tabs open. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you this photo here. So this is was sent to me by Chris Anthony. So what he has here is this is what they call a, a Su suve, uh, I don't know, but um, su suve. Anyway, it's an immersion heater. So you put this device in a pot with water, and what it does is it circulates water. So it has a circulating water pump, and then it also has a heater in here, and he has it set at ninety-five point five degrees Fahrenheit, and so the water will move around in this um, pot that he has here. And then he has this other jar here. And so what he's trying to do is he's trying to keep the temperature for this jar at a certain temperature because what he's cultivating, sous vide, sous vide, sous vide, sous vide, French word. Yeah, thanks. We got our French guy in the house. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Talise. Thanks. Um, sous, sous vide is what it's called. Um, and so this device keeps the temperature and it's a way of indirectly heating this. Instead of trying to put this in like a double boiler or some way, you can use this to cook like amazing, um, yeah, for, for slow cooking. Um, yeah, for, you know, you can make amazing like beef stews and, and soups and different things. And, it, and it's a really way, way of doing extremely um, precision temperature slow cooking, low temperature without like a heat source type of thing. It, well, it, there is a heat source, but it's the water. It's like putting it in a perfect water bath that's going to maintain this. I bet you this would be good for foot baths too. You know, like put this thing in there and then just put your feet in there and soak it. And that way the water wouldn't get cold while you're doing a foot bath with nice, nice natural farming solutions. You know, some lactobacillus to get the fungus out of your toes and keep them nice and smelling good. I bet you this thing does amazing foot baths. So it's beyond cooking, it can do other things such as culturing microbes. So what he's doing in this is this is the maltose recipe. So if you go back a few episodes back and search, um, you can find that we were talking about maltose. I was talking about maltose because um, we were talking about um, how to do a seed soak solution. And maltose turns out to be a very key part of that, even though it's not part of the nine core solutions, the maltose culturing this way is a very good way to, um, you know, culture, culture the, um, well, actually help things sprout. The enzymes that you get from maltose are very good to help things sprout. 
So this is what he's doing here is culturing the maltose. So I'm going to read to you uh, from his text message here he sent me and just read a little bit of what he says. So, um, um, okay. So it says, just started maltose input. The Anova precision cooker, the Sud V heater, thousand watt with circulation pump. So he took one cup of rice, hard cooked it to the Asian standard. Thanks for that. Oh, why is it thumbs upping? I gotta turn that off. Yeah, no more thumbs upping for me. I just because I'm counting one. I'm not thumbs upping. Um, so he hard cooked the rice. One cup of rice cooked hard. Then he took one cup of distiller's malt which was cracked with mortar and pestle. So divided it into two quart jars, fill to the shoulder with spring water and soak five hours. So I think both of those, he's, he's soaking the rice and he's soaking the distiller's malt, I believe. Barley, water, and hard cooked rice into the mash vessel, half gallon ma mason jar placed in water bath with heater. Oh, so yeah, so I think what he's doing, so so he has two quart jars that he's soaking the the uh, the rice in and a quart jar that he's soaking the distiller's malt in. And then he's combining the two into after after soaking for five hours, then he's com combining the two into a half gallon mason jar and then that's what you're seeing in the heater that, that we just showed in the picture. Uh, his target temperature is 50 degrees cell, uh, centigrade or 120 Fahrenheit for five hours and decants liquid and refrigerate. So, um, so, and then what he says from that, that recipe of, of getting the, um, the maltose this way is that he said the previous improvised batch worked well enough. The mice ate plants and dug up and ate sprouted peppers and tomatoes. So he told me this was the first time that in his seed bed where he planted these seeds in, that it attracted mice. And he thinks that it was so um, vital and so like lush and abundant and so full of life and energy that the mice then saw that as like, oh, that's good food and were attracted into, uh, into his seed bed. So, you know, prior to this, they didn't have that same action. You know, if it's not attracting life, it means it's dead, right? So the light, the mice came in to eat it. And so he said, so what is different from previous years? Years past, no rodent damage. Stink bugs showed up and chewed on a few plants. So good food for bugs. Now with KNF seed and maltose, food for higher life forms and animals and humans. I'm celebrating the replanting. And so he was asking me originally about this for um, some really old, like really old pumpkin seeds he wanted to sprout. Um, so the old pumpkin seeds are still thinking about it. No bad smells. If anything, they smell like pumpkin seeds. So I think he was doing the pumpkin seeds with that and getting it all together. Um, so, um, so yeah. So anyway, uh, if you're interested in the maltose recipe, we covered that in a previous episode. But now I'm always stoked when, um, when I get, um, you know, uh, emails back from folks or, you know, texts, if you really want to text me, but, um, but in people putting this into practice and then putting it in with the seed soak solution and everything, I mean, now it is, it's making a difference and this maltose being brewed here. So the maltose, um, entering and then the, the, them growing on the rice and just culturing it out. So you get the right simple enzymes in there and everything. Um, just amazing to see. So, you know, here learning from office hours, but then putting it into practice even better. Right. Um, so, so anyway, yeah, that, uh, that's cool to see. So thanks. Thanks for that, Chris. Uh, great, great to see that happening. And then, um, Let's see here. We do have some questions. Christoph got a question, so we'll get into that. He got two questions. Do I need to dehydrate dried fish for canna fuel? And will there be a PayPal option on the website? I don't use credit cards and I'm in Europe. 
Um, okay. That's a good question, both those. Um, so one is for, we'll take the second one first, and that's for our membership committee. Um, we did just, um, I, I hate digital banking. I'll just let you know, personally, I hate it. I just, it, it's, it's like, I want gold in my hands. I want hard currency. I'm a real st stringent person for that. But in our present world today, we have PayPal, we have all these other things, we have credit cards, we have digital cash, we have all these things. We are basically in the new world order that is promised to us. And so we did just get a Zelle account. Um, so Zelle is like an online money transfer bank thing. Um, and we did have that. So we may, we'll look into PayPal. I also am not like the reason we didn't go with, um, what's the other one? Um, Oh, Venmo. People always want to Venmo me. And I'm like, no, because I, 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 to my core, don't like um, pay, the company PayPal or eBay, I, although I do use eBay once in a while. Um, it, like you look into it, it's like CIA. It, it's like really, really wicked roots. And if you don't, um, you know, supporting people that doing things you don't like will only continue to have those people continue to do that. So both those companies, I, you know, I try to boycott them as best as possible. Uh, you know, convenience is always the, uh, what do you call that? The, the, the razor's edge, right? It'll get you right. It's so easy. It's hard not to, um, but it'll compromise your integrity. And then, uh, so, but we'll look into PayPal, um, because you know, why not? compromise our values to have more people join, which may in the long run increase our values, right? Um, if more people are doing natural farming, more people are able to uh, be part of the foundation, more people are able to encourage this work, support this work, and get this work going, uh, why not? And here I am on YouTube using Google and all these other unscrupulous things, and so you have to pick your battles. So I will look into compromising for that. But uh, just, you know, just so you know a little bit about me, oh, banking, central banking, hard currency, awesome. Uh, so anyway, um, and so then to get back to the first question, do I need to dehydrate fish for KNF fuel? The answer is no. Um, in fact, I'm slightly confused by that of why you would think you would need to dehydrate it. I'm not entirely sure where that where you got that information from. So let me just quickly pull up the recipe book here and um, go to the can of fuel recipe um, right here. And then get this so it's on this screen. So this is the can of fuel recipe here. And um, it is, you know, fish amino acids. So you're taking raw fish. So here, um, so 20 pounds of fish waste. I guess I should specify there maybe that it's raw. Um, but if you're going to make a five-gallon bucket, it's about 20 pounds of fish waste. The heads, guts, and spines, preferably the heads. The heads are the best. But you literally put a little layer of brown sugar, layer of fish, layer of brown sugar, layer of fish, layer of brown sugar, layer of fish. As many times as you can do that with your uh, 20 pounds of fish and your 20 pounds of brown sugar. And don't cut up your fish. Uh, just make it, you know, small enough size to fit in your bucket. And these here are kind of thin layers. Um, you know, whatever. I just put a fish head in a bucket and then I put sugar. You know, so I'll weigh the fish head out and I'll be like, oh, this one weighs, you know, 2.4 kilos. And then I'll put that in the bucket and then I'll put 2.4 kilos of sugar on top of that. And then I'll weigh the next part of fish and I'll be like, oh, this weighs 3 kilos. And then I'll put that in the bucket and then I'll take the next three kilos of sugar and put that on top and kind of lasagna layering this in here so that you get these layers so that not all the fish is at the bottom and all the sugars at the top, but there's kind of uh, fish and sugar combined with each other. So you don't need dehydrated fish. In fact, if you use dehydrated fish, I don't know where the liquid would come from to moisten this. So use raw fish, um, fish waste, heads, guts, spines, um, you know, those things. Try to avoid a whole bunch of blood. Um, if you use a whole bunch of blood, it can cause it to kind of uh, rot. So if you've got tons and tons of blood, um, you're going to have to add more sugar maybe to counter that out. Um, 
but uh, do not use dehydrated. Use raw, fresh. I should also specify that raw and fresh here. Um, fish. Make sure it's not uh, rotten already, but um, that's what you need. So you don't need dehydrated fish. Dehydrated fish would be very expensive and probably palatable. And I don't think people dehydrate the heads and guts and spines. I think they just dehydrate the meat. So, um, so yeah. So you don't need dehydrated meat. You need fresh. Oh, rehydrated. Got dry fish. Oh, rehydrating fish. You could try and rehydrate it by soaking it in beer, but I think you're going to end up getting into problems. Um, cheap pet food. Um, rehydrating fish. You could try to soak it similar to similar to um, rehydrating fish if it's dehydrated already. So similar to the KNF medicine recipe, which is right up here. Um, right here, you could try to put fish in the bottom like this and then cover it with beer. You could try to rehydrate it that way. I don't know if you'd even want to use beer. I, you definitely wouldn't. I, I don't think you'd want to use water. I've never tried to rehydrate fish. Um, maybe, maybe put the, put the fish in the bottom and then cover it with beer and then add brown sugar. I would pour the beer off. Unlike when you use the, the KNF medicine where you don't pour the liquid off, I'd pour the liquid off after it rehydrated. I don't know. That's, I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of guessing here. I'm kind of guessing, uh, to be honest, uh, rehydrating fish. I'm not a professional at that. Um, it's so easy for me to get fresh fish. Uh, I live a mile from the ocean. Um, so I don't have a whole lot of, um, experience rehydrating fish, but you could try it. You could try it, cover it with beer, leave it for 24 hours. See if it'll, if it'll do it. I mean, if it's cheaper and it's easier, you, I think you're also in Germany, right? So beer's cheap. I don't know. Um, try and get some, you know, end of the year brew beer, Oktoberfest, load up, the, load up your, uh, your steins and bring them home and try and rehydrate that fish, man. I don't know. Uh, if you do do it, if you do try and rehydrate the fish, do send me a picture, you know, send me a little th email, uh, you know, um, and share with me. Cause I'd love to see that. That would be uh, an experiment. Um, something that, you know, and if it works, then we could share it with more people and see, and that would be cool. So, um, so <laughs> I love how, when I show the sous vide sous vide everyone's already fa uh, familiar with it um you know awesome for cooking steaks uh, rainbow possum does her thanksgiving turkey that way every year man that is uh that's amazing um so yeah what's up mark good to see you brethren he's up in uh rainy southern oregon so um so with that, um, you know, here we are, we're into that. Uh, did I have anything else? Maybe, uh, so, oh, um, I am, uh, I will be teaching, um, Korean natural farming on Maui. I was supposed to be going next weekend, uh, but we had to push it off because the folks from Molokai could not join. So I will be doing a Korean natural farming course next or May, May about a month from now, like May 15th-ish, I think. Let me, I can double check on my calendar, but I, uh, maybe I'll just tell you again when I, when it gets closer, but I will be teaching on Maui. So if you are on Maui and you wanna, um, I'll be going over Thursday and teaching that evening. Then I have Friday somewhat free, meaning that um, I just, I wanna kick it with natural farming people and connect with the folks over there. So if you are on Maui and you wanna link up, I do like around May 15th-ish, around that time. I will be over there and I have my Friday free, meaning that, you know, I'm probably going to do something uh, agricultural related, doing natural farming somehow, uh, maybe even talking about um, the drone sprayer and the bunchy top um, things going on uh, up uh, in uh, central Maui. Um, and then that Saturday we'll be doing a hands-on course 
going through um, extremely cheap microbes and um, and um, how to make canna food. So get those get those uh, farm apprentice mentors uh, downloaded with the solutions and the recipes and all the things to be able to do that. So um, and then also uh, I think I'm working on getting a course together in Oahu. So. If you're on Oahu and you're interested in a KNF course, you can um, email me, drake at purekanf.org. Um, it's my foundation email, and I will try and get back to you and let you know when that's happening and how you can get involved. Um, so, and Cecily saying that she buys... Um, <laughs> she, she knows the... the the ocean's fished out. So do I. There's not the same amount of fish. Oh man, it's so, it's scary when our fish are dying off. Um, and she buys Western Australia uh, sardines at about seven dollars per kilo. Best money spent. Sardines are if I if I do before I move on to the the Madage, because I do want to get there. Um, I'll just pull up uh, Master Cho's old book here. So this old book here, th this one with this cover. You may find this one online. Uh, with my handwriting in it. <laughs> if you see this, that I wrote that with my own hand. Um, anyway, uh, he does talk about um, the fish. He calls it fish amino acid. I call it can of fuel. I think fuel's better. But he does talk about how to make the fuel here. And um, I know I've covered this before, um, but he does cover the type of fish to use. So scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So he does talk about um, here specifically, I do think, does he mention sardines? Um, maybe he does here. Um, but, the, but he says, you know, the fish to use, um, blue black fishes may be used as well. Um, and so, um, He's saying blue black fish is common name for blue colored fishes. For example, mackerel, Spanish mackerel, horse mackerel, salary, garfish, herring, yellowtail, sardine. It is mentioned right here. Sardines. You know, so he specifically mentioned sardines. Salmon, sweet fish, bluefin tuna, skipjack tuna, anchovies. Um, blue black fishes have good proteins, amino acids, and fatty acids. They contain a lot of DHA and EPA, which are well-known unsaturated fatty acids that are recognized as healthy food. So it's all about that omega balance type of thing. Maybe I'll make it a little bigger for you. Both DHA and EPA function to lower cholesterol level and prevent adult diseases such as art, art, arteriosclerosis, uh, and high blood pressure. So, um, and then blue black fish help children to be bright, supplying oxygen to their brain, which is super important. You know, got to have the oxygen in the brain for your children and their brain cells. Maybe I'll make this a little wider. Um, and blue black fish also prevent Alzheimer's disease in elderly people. So if you're getting older and you're losing your mind, don't forget to take your fish amino acids. By so and it works by preventing aging and death of brain cells. So if you also do a lot of drugs and alcohol, maybe this can also help you, you know, counter those effects. Or maybe you could quit drugs and alcohol. You know, either way. But uh, up to you. Each person their own. Um, blue black fish contain various abundant vitamins. Vitamin A prevents night blindness. So if you can't see as well at night, you know, people talk about being elderly and not seeing as well at night and strengthens the immune system, which, uh, you know, who wants a strengthened immune system when you can just take the shot, right? <laughs> That's lol. Anyway, increasing resistance to diseases such as common cold. Um, so if you don't want the common cold, which I think now the coronavirus, the, uh, the, um, oh no, it's common flu, I believe, but common cold, common cold, common flu. Are they the same? I don't know. Someone, someone fact check me. But if you are, um, you know, I think the CDC said to treat the, uh, 
COVID-19 just as the common cold, common flu now. So if you want to avoid that, um, because clearly the other medical tests they did did not work, um, start eating your fish amino acid. Uh, and then bite, vitamin B complex prevents anemia and beriberi. I have no idea what beriberi is. But it sounds good to me. I don't want them berry berries. So you gotta watch out. Don't give this to your bears because it prevents them um, and helps cells to regenerate. So who, you know, you need cells to regenerate, right? We're all dying. And uh, if our cells aren't regenerated, we're dying faster. Um, the vitamin E in it functions to slow down the aging process by blocking peroxide li lipids in the cell. Doesn't that sound sweet? Um, slowing down the aging process. So whoever out there has fish amino acid and is not consuming it themselves, they have the can of fuel and they're not consuming it themselves. Looking at me, I, I was doing it for a while and then I stopped. Why? I don't know. Maybe I like getting gray hair. Maybe I like aging faster. Maybe I want my brain to rot. Maybe I don't want blood to my head. Um, I don't know. All these reasons. Uh, such, is, such effects are also excellent in plants. So I think that's super funny when you read Master Cho's um, literature and he basically talks about how it's good for the human completely. He's all human based, animal based. And then he's like, yeah, it's also good for plants. And people here majority think that KNF is all about plants. And it's like, no, it's all about you, the human. Increase yourself, increase these things. And then it's also good for plants, right? Uh, it's like a side effect. Yeah, and it's also good for plants. Um, but if you don't want your old plants to get Alzheimer's, you gotta be giving them the, uh, the fuel, the fish amino acids. And man, each time I read this, I'm like, man, I gotta do this. And I think about it and I was telling my dad the other day, I'm like, man, we were talking about, um, Paul, I listened to Paul Stamets recent Joe Rogan interview. And I was like, he's talking about mushrooms. I mean, of course, right. Paul Stamets. Um, and, but, uh, we're talking about um, turkey tails uh, fixing the cancer or making the cancer disappear in his mom. And then my dad was, you know, having a few issues. And I was like, maybe you should do some turkey tails and some agaricons. And, uh, and I was just like, you know, and then Paul Stamets in the interview, he's talking about how he was doing some uh, COVID-19 helping to mitigate the effects of the, of the juice. And, um, Oh, no, no, the, the, no. I see. The thing is, the thing is, you got to accept people from all sides and you got to understand that, you know, uh, he's, he's understanding and Paul, Paul has to be very careful about what he says. Um, so, you know, he, you know, uh, it's not, I don't think, you know, um, I see to me, anybody, you know, like everybody made different choices in 2021, 2020, 2021, 2022, everyone did different things to their body. Me, I just stayed natural. I was like, I ain't putting that experimental stuff in me. Right. Um, but, but other people did and that's fine. And, um, you may or may not have side effects from that. And it may, it probably didn't work for you. Uh, those experimental things that you put in, but, um, but using understanding mushrooms and understanding, um, these things, uh, and how they work. Um, it, it, it's like, uh, he, he can't just say that, uh, certain, you know, he's very, he has to be very careful about what he has because he has a product line of things and everyone should be careful on the internet because you can get canceled right off YouTube immediately for saying the wrong thing. Um, because they were under an emergency order. And if you read about emergency orders, you'll understand that the constitution gets suspended, even though it's unconstitutional, but they can't underdo these emergency orders. And so all kinds of weird stuff happened that year because we were under emergency order. And so uh, censorship happened, you know, uh, compulsion to do things, you know. Uh, anyway, that's a huge rabbit hole. The big the thing I wanted to get back to is like I was telling my dad, it's like I think Paul Stamets is going to converge on the fact that he was saying he was growing out these these mushrooms on rice. Oh my gosh, Korean natural farming. We put rice in the forest to collect my microbes, to collect fungus, to collect bacteria, to collect this whole colony of intermeshing, synchronizing, synergistic, uh, amazing biodiversity. And I think Paul Stamets, watch, in a, in a year or two, three years, he's going to converge back to that Korean natural farming, in addition to what he's doing, is the way. 
and, and it's just my prediction you know prove me wrong bro um <laughs> um but yeah, no, and, and Paul Stamets is aware of Korean natural farming. I was like this close to talking to him, um, but, um, but my friend was in the way and didn't answer, didn't let me talk to him and just asked my question, didn't let me say, what's up, Paul? I got these ideas because I wanted to, in fact, you know, the other day I listened to the thing and I was so inspired. I was like, I'm going to start off today's office hour with an open video, an open question or an open letter to Paul Stamets to tell him, hey, we have a solution a host defense for animals. He talked a lot about bird flu and swine flu and H1N5 or H5N5 or H5N1. I don't know, whatever the, the name of bird flu, the, 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 the categorical name. And he was talking about they're slaughtering millions of chickens. Paul, we can fix that. You, you put the KNF microbes in the soil, into the flooring, and they don't get disease. Um, I'm not saying you're curing anything, but they don't get it. They, they, they're they non-symptomatic. Maybe they're asymptomatic and they're spreading it. And I don't think so. I don't think that was a real thing. I think that was something that was made up. Um, but, um, but you know, there's a way to, to completely solve um, the bird flu and swine flu. And if host defense got into this and it was like a host defense retrofit of these systems to come in and be like, hey, and, you know, I, I heard his story of him starting by himself and doing, you know, packing 30,000 boxes himself. And so I think, oh, I got to get this message to, message to Paul and he can get it out. And he can get it to the world because he has clout. He has reputation. And that's what you need. You need a celebrity to be like, we got this. Um, but I could work my way up from the bottom and be a celebrity. I mean, I'm a micro celebrity. That's pretty fun. Um, but, um, but yeah, no, it, you could come in host defense and restore and, and, you know, at least severely minimize these diseases, the spread, the, everything with using Korean natural farming or Kennedy natural farming, whatever you want to call it these days. Um, and um, do the floor and, and have these, uh, viruses be non-consequential. You wouldn't have to slaughter millions of birds or millions of pigs. Um, and with just a simple retrofit, you could change the whole industry. So I did want to do like an open letter. Maybe I make a video later and be like an open letter to Paul Stamets. Cause I, cause I, I, I could call Micah Nelson and be like, Hey, can you get me, you know, I want to talk to Paul and see, um, you know, I'm, I'm like one degree of separation away from him and he's a busy guy and he's doing a lot, but, um, you know, and it takes time to build ideas. You can't just pitch a solution to somebody and think they're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's great. But if he did the right mushrooms and he listened and he listened purely with his pure heart, he would understand where I'm coming from. And um, this could be the next level. This could be the greater contribution to science. Then instead of just the agaricons, this could be saving the whole livestock industry and mix agaricons into there and, and, and make it even better. You know, inoculate the inoculation. Um, anyway, um, I thought of that and all that. And so, um, <laughs> sardines and pineapple. Awesome. Uh, okay. You guys are great. I, I enjoy it and I love it. Our, our community we've built here. So if you do have access, you want to get these ideas out, um, you know, put a, put a, uh, tweet into, uh, Joe Rogan, Paul Stamets, uh, get them to, you know, I just need to talk to them a little bit because they don't know who I am and they don't know. I mean, they sort of do, but not really. Joe Rogan doesn't, but man, I could do a Joe Rogan and blow his mind. But he, the, the problem is he wouldn't know what to, to ask me because I haven't like published a whole bunch of books or, you know, no one, I mean, not nobody, but <laughs> this, this podcast is so esoteric. You guys are like so tuned into like next level that most people aren't resonating at this high level frequency to even understand what's going on, but you do. And I'm always blown away. It's like, oh, every Sunday I get to chill with my homies and they get it. And they're not nobody. They're, they're somebody. They're actually some of the most important people in the world. That's you. That's you. Um, so, all right, yeah, right over Joe's head. Uh, we could just, he could just smoke a J, Elon Musk style, and I could just sit there sober and tell him the downloads. Um, it'd be quite, quite the, uh, quite the thing. It's just like, bring, bring some KNF herbs for him. And he could, we could make an herbal smoker in the little room and just put in our, um, his favorite herbs and, um, maybe some rosemary, a bit of sage and puts an herbal smoker in the, in the podcast room. And even Jamie would, would get down on it, you know, and then we could just, uh, drop the, um, you know, 
the knowledge on Joe and be like, brethren, we're going to go deep into the soil today, deeper than you've ever been. There's UFC happening under your feet. There's a fight club that you didn't even know about. And that's a bunch of peaceful warriors doing good for balancing out the ecosystem. I'd love to just blow his mind and drop it in and just be like, yo, Bridgen. Because the, the thing is, once he gets it, and Joe Joe's a nice guy, he likes coming to Hawaii, maybe he could stay here, you know, in the office or right next door in the beautiful Airbnb we have. Um, or, uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't call it that anymore. Was, uh, but, um, but yeah, you know, because um, then his audience get this out to millions of people, these solutions that are actually in our hands, right? Paul talked about it. He talked about mixing the mycelium on a race. Like, did you hear that part? It was like, you know, for, but for, before the first hour and 27 minutes, because that's as far as I got into that thing. Um, but, um, you know, get Paul Stamets on board, get Joe Rogan, solve the world's problems, peace before uh, World War III erupts, which seems almost eminent, but it always seems eminent. Those guys just doing their things, trying to convince us. So um, so anyway, uh, big sidetrack there. Um, but Paul Stamets, mushrooms, healing, taking mushrooms, uh, and, and I guess to return back to the original tangent, I, I was, um, you know, I'll tangent one more time. I was always impressed by my colonel uh that he would always go off on these crazy tangents talking about football and then he'd come back and remember what he's talking about and so i always was like i want to have that ability to go on a crazy tangent but then come back and remember what i'm talking about so speaking of that coming back to the original bit that i started to really tangent off on this is that um i have these solutions right you have these solutions we have these solutions and right there if you look at master cho's text right right there he's talking about for human health and how often does it just sit on your shelf and you use it on your plants or you use it out there or it just sits on your shelf and you forget to use it and you don't use it on yourself and i'm like man here's this fish aminos i gotta be starting consuming this way more often i you know put it it's delicious when i make a great batch it's like put it in my water it's delicious I, I, my body craves it the other day I think I talked about it before, but last a year ago when I was on Maui doing this course, I had the the can of fuel, the fish aminos, and I was just chugging it and my body was just craving it. And it was just like, whoa, and I know I need more of this. Um, so we have these solutions, right? I need to be doing more IMOs, putting those in, getting, you know, drinking the vinegar, the medicine, the, the fuel, all these things. I know some of you out there do drink it and, and it's just amazing for you, but sometimes I forget to just put it in my water and drink it, right? Like the number one tool in the world is yourself, right? I'm a big tool, right? It's kind of funny. I'm a, I'm a sky crane, the biggest tool on earth. Um, if you if you die, your farm dies, your family probably is not less benefited and all these things. So I keep forgetting I have, it's like the I Ching talks about it. I have the well, but I forget to drink from it. It's like I have access to all these things, but I need to be consuming more of them. So anyway, um, yeah, so I'll get off that topic and uh, just realize we got these solutions. Increase doing it. Make sh make hay while the sun shines. Drink these things. Get them into our bodies. Get them into our blood. Get them into our microorganisms and spread them. Because if we're healthy, other people will be healthy and it'll be more attractive. And maybe Paul Stamets will give me a call. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe not. It's cool. Maybe he'll converge to it anyway. It's the truth. You, you know, it's just like who invented calculus, Newton or Leibniz. And it's like, it's the truth, man. You can't invent the truth. You just discover the truth. So if Paul Stamets discovers it before me, after me, doesn't need me, even better. It's the truth. Um, And then before we get into the my jab, because it's right here, Big Wes reminded me that he did um, his alfalfa meal FBJ. So he was asking about rehydrating it the other day. He did rehydrate it and expanded in the beer. Um, and then you should add the sugar to it. So just because it expands in the beer, you need to add the sugar. And then once you pour it off, you need to um, super saturate the liquid that you pour off. Um, uh, so you need to pour it off and then you need to um, super saturate it and then it'll last longer. 
And if you put it in the fridge, it'll last even longer. So you need to arrest the fermentation after you're done. So the liquid, if you've taken alfalfa, which is dry, rehydrated with beer, it expands, then put in the sugar to ferment it. Then you get a liquid off just like a plant juice you would making a can of food. Then you add sugar until you've super saturated that. If you don't know, click on the YouTube below, go to my channel. It's one of the sponsored videos or featured videos at the top is how to super saturate. Look at that, find it out, do that. And you need to super saturate all solutions. Otherwise they will rot and turn to vinegar sooner than later. Um, so yeah, do super saturation. And with that, with that, with that, we came into the last 10 minutes. We got it here. So always my dad, my dad, got to make YouTube folks. You got to watch till the end. Got to watch till the end. Well, you know, because it pays better on the algorithm, I guess, you know, whatever. You don't have to watch till the end, but my jab gets dropped at the end. So let's, uh, let's pick off, pick up where we resumed last time. We were at number three, I reckon. Number three, we were doing pest control for rice. Yep, because I remember we are talking about the smut, how this cures smut. So if you got a bunch of smut in your neighborhood, uh, you know, you can cure it with, uh, what was it? It was basically soap, sulfur, and herbs. Sounds pretty awesome. Sounds pretty cheap. So if you're interested in those recipes, we covered them last week extensively. And uh, through my piercing headache, which I'm feeling a heck of a lot better this week. Maybe I got to do more fish amino acid too. The can of fuel. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit this and hit that. And hopefully this unblurs it a little bit. But today we are going to get into... Why is this other thing there? Okay, today we are going to get into recipe number four. I don't know if you can see it. It is powdery mildew, downy mildew, and fungal diseases. So we already know powdery mildew, downy mildew, and fungal diseases. Most of them can be prevented with lactobacillus, the KNF protectors. Early and often put it down and put it into onto the plant's leaves, and you won't end up with powdery mildew. So... What is powdery mildew? Let's just look it up real quick over here. Powdery, powdery mildew. And um, let's get this like that and do this. So powdery mildew, we can shop powdery mildew. Oh, killer. So they're having some killers here, um, but obviously you know that early and often prevention is the best and it's easy way to do it. Maybe I should make a video on this. The cure to powdery mildew. I don't know if you can say that. Um, but here's what powdery mildew is. This is, oh, and downy mildew are both on the same page. So we can look at both these. So this one is downy mildew. This one is powdery mildew. So I wonder if this is the same leaf. This looks like a cucumber, super susceptible leaf to both of these things. Um, and that's what we're dealing with. So if you're having fungal or, or uh, bacterial growths on your leaves, we know that if you have lactobacillus on this and you have a healthy plant that's being fed the can of solutions all the time, you probably won't have these types of issues. But if you do and you've waited too long and you haven't done can of the, the, the way I'm talking about and you haven't done it properly, uh, it is a fungal disease, actually. So it is a fungal disease and it affects a wide range of plants. Um, so if you have these types of fungals growing, you know you probably haven't been doing the other beneficial stuff. And so now you're in a pickle, and what do you do? It's going to ruin your crop. Well, there's a solution if you've waited too long and you now have it. And it is mixing soap and sulfur together with water and spraying it. Okay, I don't recommend this. I think that, you know, if you have powdery mildew, it's a sign that you're, and you have it rampantly, that you're missing the soil foundation, you're missing the plant fertility to start with. And I don't recommend killing it this way because um, you're just shooting yourself in the foot and you really need to get beneficial microbes on the plant leaves instead of trying to kill things. But let's just go read this recipe anyway, because it's developed by Young Sung Cho son of master cho where 
He doesn't give any credit to Master Cho. He just makes things up himself because he's a chemist. I love the guy. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not hating on him. I love him. He's a good guy. Um, so he says to mix three liters of the soap with 1.2 liters of the sulfur. And you mix those into 500 liters of water. Okay. So what is that ratio? Three. Hmm. I don't know. It's a ratio. I should be able to do this. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to give you a ratio. I, I, just, I need a spreadsheet to do this, to be honest. I just put in a spreadsheet because doing quick math in my head, especially dividing three by five or five by three, it's like, ah, that's darn divisible. Although the, tw ah, no, that's not divisible. I mean, evenly. So... No, everyone, everyone out there is going to insult my math. It's okay. So, um, so use after the disease has occurred. Okay. So he's recommending you use this sulfur and soap mixed into water after the disease has occurred. Why not do preventative stuff and keep it from growing in the first place and, and contribute to a healthier plant? Well, because he doesn't want to listen to his father. He's, he wants to innovate on his own. Um, increase dose for stronger effect. For a greenhouse, uh, start from a half liter of sulfur. Open fields, use one liter and increase. So even though he gave you the 1.2 liters as his recommended rate, he's saying if you're in a greenhouse, maybe you should not, and this is of the sulfur, he's saying you should actually, instead of that, start with a half liter or if you're in an open field, one liter. So instead of his recommended original 1.2 liters, you actually start less and then increase. You can add the herbal solutions um, to add insect control effect. Okay, so if you have multiple problems because you're not using KNF and you need to, you know, pull out the big guns and go violent towards it, then you can also add uh, herbs to it. But if you're doing this other stuff, you shouldn't have these problems. Ah, that's why I, covering the majaj, getting into this, I'm just like, it's because you're not doing farming properly. That's why you need these things. But anyway, I, I, I should just let that go. I'll let that go. It's the last time I'm going to mention it today. Um, just realize that's the truth. Um, so, and if you do add herbal solution, increase the soap to above five liters. So originally he was advertising three liters. Instead, increase it to five liters, which is about one to 100. That one's easy. I can do that one because 500, 500 and five are divisible by each other. See, uh, mental math. I'm getting better at math as I read. It says, do not reapply pesticides with sulfur to already applied areas in one-time application. Do not reuse leftover pesticide. So I don't really understand what he says by do not reapply pesticides with sulfur to already applied area in one time application. I think he means don't do multiple applications of sulfur because it, it'll accumulate and it'll burn. I believe that's what he's trying to say. I'm not exactly sure that, that one, that paragraph is not very clear. And then do not reuse leftover pesticides. I think he means you can't just let this stuff sit around. After you've mixed it up, just use it all. Um, you know, dump it in your local water supply. <laughs> no, that's super bad advice. Don't. Um, you know, in fact, just throw it throw it away. Don't ever use this. Um, if you're doing this, you you you're probably not farming right. But I said I wasn't gonna hate on that anymore. Um, but no. Uh, anyway, so um, so he'll say he says this this treats a bunch of things. So I'm just gonna bring this up close, see if you can see it here. Um, he got some strawberries over here that are infected with gray mold. He got some like uh, citrus stuff discoloration, some leaf discoloration, some I don't know this discoloration, all kinds of things over there. So you know if you have those, it looks to me like you probably should have done. KNF better in the first place, but it will, you know, sulfur and fungal things are basically, um, you know, uh, sulfur really helps to kill 
fungus and not necessarily beneficial fungus because it's thicker and has thicker cell wall, but pathogenic fungus, which tends to be thinner and smaller and sulfur. If anytime you're dealing with fungal problems, sulfur is a good solution uh, to do this. Uh, if you didn't manage it other ways ahead of time. And the reason you're probably getting these detrimental funguses is because you're lacking plant nutrition and soil um, biodiversity. But fungus really goes in and things like powdery mildew, which are very, um, you know, parasitic, very thin walled, very, you know, very fine fungus. Sulfur just, just annihilates it. It just goes right through the cell wall and just kills it. Um, so sulfur can be beneficial if you are already having poor farming practices. But if you're seeing this type of thing up here, then you are, you know, you probably need to do stuff ahead of time. Um, oh, and that was a grape leaf over here. This, this one, I, I couldn't, I didn't read the caption, but this over here, this is a grape leaf and it actually looks like it's one leaf. There's downy mildew on this side and powdery mildew on this side. So if you got two funguses attacking your plant, this grape to me probably needed more nutrition, more than just sulfur, sulfur and soap sprayed on it. However, sulfur and soap will help this recover because it'll annihilate this, but then you are leaving yourself open to the next fungus landing and starting and growing. So you need to come back and after you use sulfur and soap, you need to come back and spray beneficial microbes. That's either IMO tea that you've made from IMO two, three, or four, a tea that you've made or protector microbes and or protector microbes and IMO both. So you need to come back and you need to coat the leaf surface with beneficial microbes after you've knocked these back. Okay. If you don't do that, you will forever be in the loop of trying to kill things and you'll never get into the loop of life. So, um, and then there's also some comments in the chat that, um, hydrogen peroxide also works well to get rid of these things, uh, for downy mildew and powdery mildew. Um, and I, I don't doubt it. It's an oxygenation thing. These are probably anaerobic fungi that are plugged in to feed off your leaf and all these things. So, oh, and also I appreciate the super chats. We got bird giving a super chat and Christoph giving a super chat. That's amazing. I, I really thank you. I, I didn't, I saw those come in, but I didn't mention it, but I should I encourage you super chat, like share, subscribe, all those things you're supposed to do on YouTube. Um, and and Stonemason says that he was able to take his zucchini to frost last year with no powdery mildew first time ever because he's doing the KNF, he's doing the maintenance solutions, the sprays, everything. I know he is. Um, and that's why it's able to go. The cucumbers got it, uh, will still get it, but not until late season after heavy production. So uh, I would say Stonemason for the cucumbers, make sure you're getting the seawater on there and maybe go a little heavier with the seawater. It's probably a nutrition mineral deficiency that's happening as the plant ages. So try a little bit more seawater with those cucumbers on them specifically, specifically, specifically. Um, and, um, and then Rainbow Possum Farm says, yeah, normally powdery mildew normally runs rampant in the Pacific Northwest, but they haven't had it in years because they started KNF. And it's true. It's that you, once your plant is tough and robust and has the nutrition it needs, it won't get these things. Um, so, yeah. Um, and you guys still deal with squash bugs. So squash bugs, um, we have another recipe in here. We may have covered it already, but um, we will get into, we went through weevils, we went through powdery mildew. We're gonna get into canker, black spot, pear rust. We're gonna get into aphids and mites. We're gonna get into moths, scales, diamondback moths, citrus, flatids, plant hopper, leaf hopper, mulberry sucker spot, cicada, stink bugs. I think we already did this one. Thrips, greenhouse, white fly, turnip moth, bleed beetle, pear sucker, fruit fly, onion. We did that one for sure, but we can do it again. Um, and all these other things. So if you're dealing with pests and bugs, uh, this book, Madage, um, look for it. It, um, it has a lot of these solutions and um, all these things. So, um, so yeah, 
Um, and Rainbow is saying they also didn't have uh, squash bugs or vine borers here that they've seen. So it looks like as you increase the plant health, also the bugs don't come. So if you're dealing with bugs and you're trying to fight them with this book here, and the reason he has these pest solutions with these things is because the cheap microbes and the um, the cheap food that he makes are not as high quality as the as Master Cho's recipes. So this is a cheap way to get into it, but then you'll also have to fight things and... Um, but also, you know, go back to past episodes and learn, learn Korean natural farming from Master Cho. Understand that he has avoided all these problems by just increasing plant health. And there are ways to get off the weapons and the violence and get into the health and fertility and long-term things happening. So I know I keep ragging on that. But um, anyway, you guys know it. I'm glad to see the comments of people talking about this. We can go further, deeper into this maybe next time. Maybe, um, you know... Uh, get uh, get Rainbow Possum on the um, the membership uh, sun uh, monthly meeting to do some what 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 they've done for um, things or whatever. You know, we'll try and bring more information. So, if you are a member, look forward to seeing you at two p.m. today, Hawaiian Standard Time, whatever time that is for you out there. Uh, look forward to hearing from Royal Flush Farms. And if you're not a member, you can join right now, purekf.org. Get in there. Get it so you have the Zoom link so you can be part of this so we can hear from you. And instead of this, where office hours are just me out to you, the peer, the membership meeting is everybody together interacting. And I'm still there to help host facilitate, but I'm really trying to get it so we're getting these peer groups together and you can connect with this larger community besides just the chat right there but in a way where you can all integrate in. It is $5 a month, $10 a month, less than that, you know, depends uh, between $5 and $10 a month, or you can you, you can make it as expensive as you want, which we always appreciate big spenders. Helping the foundation, help this happen, help the office hours, thanks to the Pure KNF Foundation. I will see you later today. If not, I will see you next Sunday, I believe. I'll be here again, yay, because I'm not going to Maui. Um, and uh, enjoy... Do the basics, do the things. Thanks for the super chats. Appreciate you. Um, and thanks for making the world a better place and overthrowing the Federal Reserve and the central bankers and bringing it back to sound currency and agriculture and real legitimate things. You're doing it whether you know it or not. Thank you. I'm going to get out of here before I get censored off this platform. Love you. Aloha. Bye now.